there's not always a bright spot. In some situations, there are just some things that suck. But that's not the case when it comes to the sign-stealing allegations when it comes to Michigan. There is a bright spot, and I think it's a verifiable bright spot. And I would imagine that there are a lot of college football coaches who will see the bright spot and agree that there is a silver lining to all of this coming down. Because when push comes to shove and when this is all wrapped up and it will eventually all be wrapped up and we'll be able to look back on it and think about the preposterous nature of the entire situation, whether it's completely true as it's currently presented or whether there's more twists and turns to this story, we'll be able to look back on it and see how crazy and ridiculous and outlandish the whole thing is and I think that's part of what makes college football great you don't really get stories like this in many other sports outside of the Houston Astros banging on some trash cans it just doesn't really happen but the bright spot is is that I I think it's undeniable that radio systems are coming to college helmets the same way that they have been in NFL helmets for decades. That soon enough, and probably for the 2024 college football season, there will be radios inside quarterbacks' helmets. And if I I had my way, the radios would be in everybody's helmets. There's no reason not to have them there. And I, I guess there is, there might be a reason in college football, and that is that smaller schools don't want to have to pay for that technology. And to to even call it technology feels weird because it's, frankly, almost antiquated technology. But I guess by letter of the law, it is technology. That there are some schools who are like, why I, I, I don't want, one, I don't want to pay to put that technology in my helmets. And then two, if you pass the rule that makes it okay and I don't put that technology in my helmets, then I'm going to be a step behind the competition. And as you know, in college football recruiting, being a step behind the competition might as well being a mile behind the competition. But I, I think it's really abundantly clear that that is going to happen in college football. You already have seen some coaches like Scott Leffler is the head coach. And by the way, is a Michigan man is the head coach at Bowling Green State University and said, hey, listen, if, if we had this technology in our helmets, we this this conversation, this story going around nationally does not happen. It just it, it's not even a. It's not even a thought somebody has, and there's not even the temptation to consider trying to steal somebody's signs because you don't have to put up a poster board that has the Indiana Pacers logo, Betty White, a Ferrari, and a Chipotle burrito on it that has to mean something to your players. It just, you don't have to do that. You can just tell your quarterback, hey, we're going to (laughs) go slot F right, spider two Y banana, and it's done. That seems really simple. So why is simple? And this is this is college sports as a whole. Why is simple so difficult to legislate, get passed, and get instituted? Another topic for another day. But I think it's abundantly clear that there's going to be a push from the coaches to say, "Why are we doing this?" Why are we operating this way when there is better, has been better, could be better? Why are we doing it this way? So do not be surprised if, and I, I, I've i I've said yesterday, I don't expect there to be an explanation from Jim Harbaugh in Michigan for why things have come out the way they have, why this quote-unquote low-level staffer has been to 30 games at 11 Big Ten stadiums, and now it's come out that was checking out Tennessee and Alabama and Clemson as well. Why he was doing all that if they weren't if they weren't cheating. So, with that in mind and 
the alter the flip side of that is there are a lot of coaches that are like, well, yeah, this goes on at a lot of places, just not to the left. Like everybody's got a sign stealer, but not everybody has a we're going to go to games in advance, videotape their signals and then pair that with what happened on the field to decipher just who's doing what, how they're doing what and how we can get an advantage from that. And by the way, the comments on yesterday's video about and basically all, all, the title of yesterday's video was Jim Harbaugh and Michigan have some explaining to do. And the comments are stupid. <laughs> and it's basically the exact people that I talked about yesterday of when evidence has been presented to you that maybe somebody on your team has done something bad. The the flurry of no, no. And here's why. For instance, sorry, but no, this is at Brady Baseball 13. Sorry, but no, stealing signs and even having your opponent's signs printed out, if that is what it is, is not illegal. That's not what I said. It's not illegal to steal signs. It's illegal to go to games of opponents you're going to play in a few weeks, videotape their signals, and then use that for an advantage. That is 100% illegal. I didn't say that that's what they did. I said that's what's reported to have happened. But it is proof that you did that if you've got a laminated sheet of what their signals are on your sideline. That is proof that you did it. <laughs> so you can't say, no, -uh, they didn't do that. That's not illegal. Well, how in the hell else did they get the video? How in the hell else did they get the signals and then make a graphic of what those signals are, who's giving them and what they mean, unless they were doing the thing they're not allowed to do? That is not hard to put together. That is a one plus one equals two. <laughs> that's That's all there is to it. Like, you, you can't say there is no video of a Michigan official videotaping any. Like, apparently, yes, there is. <laughs> the, the schools are sending security camera footage to the NCAA of the very thing they're accusing Michigan of doing. Doing. So the idea that stealing science isn't illegal. I know that. You know that how they stole the signs is illegal. Otherwise, they wouldn't have laminated sheets of the team's signals on their sidelines. If you stole them in the first quarter, sure, fine. That's okay. Nobody has a problem with it. But when it comes out that your quote-unquote low-level staffer who hardly has any involvement whatsoever with our football program, there is verifiable photographic and video evidence of that guy standing next to whoever is calling the plays, whether Michigan is on offense or defense, and then all of those coaches are equipped with the signals of your opponent. I don't know how you then say, well, that's not against the rules, and he didn't even mean that much to the program. What? <laughs> how do you come to that conclusion? How, to you, how do you come to that realization? It doesn't make a lick of sense, and the mental gymnastics involved are ridiculous. Stop it. You are smarter than that, or at least I'd like to think so. But here we sit. So the bright side is, is that there's going to be radios in the helmets. And I think radios should be in everybody's helmets. One, the game is only going to improve and get faster. College football, at this point, I don't, I still, I'm not in love with the new clock rules. I want more possessions. I want more points. I want more explosive plays. I don't want college football games to mimic the NFL where games finish 27, 24, because somebody scored with a minute 38 left on the clock to take the lead. And then the other team, you left them too much time and they march down the field, kick a game winning field goal. And that's how the game ends. I don't want to see more games like that. I want to see explosive offenses, physical defenses, and I want teams to have as many possessions as possible. You put radios in everybody's helmets. There is no turn to the sideline, decipher what the Chipotle burrito, Betty White, Indiana Pacers, Ferrari sign means, and then get to the line. You just have a coach in everybody's ear saying, all right, we're going to do X, Y, Z. 
it makes for a better game. It makes for a better product. It makes for a faster product, a more entertaining product. The downside for some schools, it's it's going to make for a more expensive product that you are already feel like you are spending too much money on your football program as is. Why are you going to spend? And I don't know what the cost is to equip now. And this probably changes the whole uniform aspect and thing because you're not going to equip 110 helmets like Oregon has. 30 30 different combos they can wear. Uh, you're not going to equip 30 different sets of helmets with 110 radios. I get that. But I just think, I, one, I think it's a foregone conclusion. It is going to happen that starting next season, there will be radios in at least the quarterback's helmet. Bank on it. Again, I would love to see it in everybody's helmet so the coach can address everybody on offense or everybody on defense or everybody on the team at once. I think it makes for one an interesting dynamic. It makes the game faster. It makes the game more exciting, more interesting, et cetera. And I think that college football, maybe more so than college basketball, I remember reading a, uh, a quote from, I think it was the University of Alabama athletic director that when they were talking about like basketball or the rest of the NCAA outside of college football and basketball, where like Alabama has the financial resources that if they wanted to give 25 baseball scholarships, they could. But they can't because schools like the like Hartford, like schools in the Northeast Conference and the MAAC um, and, you know, like the Big West outvote them when it comes to like, hey, we have the money and the financial resources it, that why should we have to split 11.7 scholarships in baseball when we, if we want 25 baseball scholarships, we can give 25 baseball scholarships. We want to give so many gymnastics scholarships. Why can't we? Well, because we get outvoted by the small schools well, on college football. They're kind of prepped for like, if we want to put a hundred radios in our helmets, do we have the numbers to get that done? Yeah. Because so many of the American athletic and mountain West schools are going to vote yes for that because they don't want to be like, they still want that door to be open for pathway to the power five. Now I, I think it's closed power four at this point. I, I think it's closed. That, that, that pathway doesn't necessarily really exist anymore, but they're not going to be want to be viewed as somebody voting against what everybody else in the power five wants, but radios are coming to college football helmets. I think it's a good thing. I think it's a long overdue thing. And I don't understand why it really has taken this long other than those sm small schools have said, I'm not going to pay for that. And they don't want to be left behind where schools in the Mac and in the Sun Belt conference USA aren't going to say like, yeah, let me spend an extra, I don't know, $100,000 every year to do this. They don't want to do that. So college football has it. And everybody else just has kind of gone along with that, with that thought process and that frame of mind. Now, this year, uh, outside of the New Year's Six Bowl games and the National Championship game, they are going to test if you want, like if you are playing in the, the Belk Bowl, and you want to have your quarterback have a radio, they're allowing it. I think it's a good test. I think that's why bowl season is – like I, I, we'll talk about bowl season down the line. I, I love bowl season. I think there are like people – there are too many bowls. Well, if the options on like Tuesday, December 28th are watching the Little Caesars Pizza Bowl or a Days of Our Lives rerun, that makes for a pretty easy decision now, doesn't it? But that – it's another discuss discussion for another day, but the bowl season allows for some experimentation if you want it. And schools are going to try it. And you know what they're going to find is that they really liked it, that they really enjoyed having the ability to just one way communicate with their quarterback so he can tell everybody what in the hell's going on rather than hold up the poster board or you got six guys on the signs wearing non school colors signaling and you got the trash bags duct tape to hockey sticks so you can put them up so the players can see it's just a it's a bad system and 
it's a bad system that everybody know has known is a bad system for a long time, and yet just went along with it where nobody had the berries to just pound the table and say, why are we doing this? This is stupid. And so now it gives everybody kind of an out, the whole Michigan sign stealing allegations give, give an out for, hey, we should change this because we could have had our sign stolen. We could, the, uh, the integrity of the game is at stake. And that will make a lot of sense to a lot of people. So make no mistake about it. There are radios coming to college football helmets in the very near future. And I'm okay with that. Uh, I, and I don't see a reason why you wouldn't be okay with that. I don't know why you would be against that. I, I think one of the common uh, refrains is that basically like, I want you to do your preparation on Monday through Friday. So when Saturday comes, you're ready. And instead of coaches having like supreme control over the game, it's still up to the players. I don't know how to tell you this, but coaches have always and will always have supreme control over the game. Putting radios in helmets isn't going to change that. It's just going to make communication way easier and way more effective than either having every play in your playbook on a wristband and you've got to find black column three, number 72, and then bark that out to everybody else. Or you can just say into the quarterback's head, here's what I want you to do. The end. It's not that hard. So I don't, I don't even know what the rebuttal against. No, damn it. There shouldn't be radios other than money. Other than my school can't afford that. Okay. That's a fair and valid rebuttal, but should the sport be held back because some schools don't want to spend that money? I don't think so, but I'm not, I'm not a fan of one of those schools that couldn't afford to pony up to put radios and helmets either. So maybe I would have a different perspective, but I don't currently. It's a bad way to communicate. We have better ways. Like We're not cavemen. We have technology. So let's use it. That'll do it for today's episode of the Daily Huddle. We'll be back at it tomorrow. Certainly appreciate you making us a part of your day, however it is, wherever it is you're doing. So if you're watching on YouTube, hit the subscribe button. Make sure you're getting all of our great college football content here that we're pumping out at Saturday Glory. If you're listening on the podcast, drop a five-star review. It goes a long way in getting in front of more college football fans. We'll see you tomorrow for the Daily Huddle here from Saturday Glory.